a good what is today wednesday august 2nd or 3rd it's your boy michael ray bauer i'm going live it's been a few days been a minute since i made a video and since i went live and i was feeling decent today and i felt like hey your friends, your YouTubers, the people that support you need an update. They need you to go live. They need you to show your face. They need to show that you're still alive, even though I'm living in the matrix, as you can see behind me. And I'm wearing a Doctor Who shirt because it's the game of time. I don't know what's going on anymore. But I needed to go live and just present myself to the world. Through all my downfalls, my, my, my anxiety, my depression that hits me, my emotions, my health, my lack of energy, my stupidity, whatever you want to say about me, I'm still here. And I still love you, regardless. So I decided to go live, give you guys an update, hang out for a little bit. Give you some updates on what's been going on, like you care. <laughs> some of you do, and I appreciate that. But, um, yeah. Then I, I also watched a bunch of movies this past week. And we're going to get into some acting news, regardless of the SAG strike. So some stuff is going on that is interesting to some of you guys. And we'll shoot the we'll shoot the S H I T about anything. Ask me some questions in the comment below. Uh, feel free to super chat me. I appreciate it. Feel free to become a member. Sorry about the in and the out of the the the, the video camera or whatever. My lighting because the sun is going down, and my lighting ain't the best. So. Let's see if we can fix that. I doubt it. It'll probably happen during the entire show. But uh, feel free to ask me some questions. Uh, feel free to become a member for some exclusive videos that are upcoming. I have worked on a few of them on the sidelines. And yeah. So let's get the commercial out of the way. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Michael Ray. Hey, Bauer. First off, please do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. Consider becoming a member of this channel for exclusive content for future live streams and, you know, exclusive discounts on merchandise and everything like that. Also, consider becoming a, a member. I think I just said that. Um, hit that like, that subscribe. And consider super chatting during the show. If you want to ask me any questions, I'll answer it live. Everybody needs a dollar or two to, you know, to buy some tacos. And, yeah, thank you guys for being here. Let's watch the commercial, and then we'll get we'll get back to some fun. We always got to sell stuff. Hopefully make a couple of dollars off of a live stream. And another way you can support me, the creator of this content, is checking out my merchandise store with the links below. We got t-shirts for sale. Anything that I got available, I'm going to get it to you. Like Donkey Lips t-shirts. You love Donkey Lips. Donkey Lips, they come in a variety of colors. Why don't you pick yourself up one? Hey, become a camper alert. Camp on a wanna. Pick up an personalized autograph photo sent to you i also have cameos available that also come with a personalized autograph photo shout out sent to you from cameo and right now limited zeke the plumber plushy nightmare t-shirt that's right everything's limited everything's on sale support your boy michael ray hey bauer links down below sorry about that guys look like some technical issues i haven't went live in a while and i just recently had to update my computer with a bunch of stuff and try to fix a few different things and the internet 
sometimes has problems and I got a firewall now and I don't know. So if there's any future problems with the with with the stream, I'm sorry. Like Forrest Gump said, it happens. What? Shit. Yes, it does. It does. All right, let's get into some comments. Let's see who's online, if I can read all this stuff correctly. We got play a lot of games saying, what's up? I am Hawk. Oh, I could show these. That's right. I could show these on the screen. We got play a lot of games online. I am Hawk. What's up? The Kaladi. Kal- 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 Sorry. What's up? David's Permacut. Oh, Parmcast. Right? Is that like Parmesan? I don't know. What's up? Ron RMC, Raider Nation, Wrecking Crew, maybe? Or Motorcycle Crew, Raider Nation, Donkey Lips, I don't know. DJ Mexico, Mexicano Detecto. Hola, Bauer. Hola, DJ Mexico. All right. We'll get into some questions in a minute. We got Donnie. Goodness gracious. See, I am having little issues. Uh... Kayshawn, big boy king. What's up, brother? Nice matrix background. Donnie Darko. I still got to watch that movie, Donnie. Still got to watch Donnie Darko. My boy Brent Mania is online. What's up, everybody? Video comment. <laughs> I still love that name. You became a member on our last show, so thank you very much. Happy Wednesday, Hey Bauer. I want a shirt that says roasted, toasted, and burnt to a crisp. Hey, going along with that theme, um, Boy, I need to add a bunch of merch and stuff to my store. I I just been having issues with the the people that manage the store, and you know some some like proving that the designs are mine and this and that and um, stuff like that. So plus they've been having issues on their end, but th- they've all been fixed. But please go to my merchandise store next week, probably next Thursday or Friday. Going to be at least five new products. In, in my merchandise store because my merchandise store was killing it for the last two months. Um, it slowed down a little bit recently, but I can't I can't say enough, man. Can't appreciate you guys for picking up that stuff. There's going to be more autograph photos, some personal items for sale from me, um, and more stuff like that. And thinking about doing the auction again if I if I need some more money in the next month or two, um, might pull out my storage stuff. And pull out some props, like from Evolution, X-Files, and stuff like that. Some little props that I got and sell them. But um, I still do not know, so don't ask me about it. Just please stay tuned to this channel. Become a member. Check out my merchandise store. Check out my social medias. All links down below. Um, And I've been hitting a couple of cameos just recently. I think I completed my 350th cameo. After being on it for three years. So that's like an average of 110 or 15 cameos a year, which is not bad. You make like 30 to $40 off of each one. So that's a nice little thing. All right, let's get into some updates real quickly. And then, then we'll start taking some questions and stuff toward the later end of the hangout. Cause I needed to talk about a few things guys. And, um, yeah, so let's just do that. Let's get these little things on screen to sell everything. <laughs> uh, all right. What's going on? In my, oh, see, my screen went dead. Hopefully it doesn't keep going out, guys. Apologize if there's any technical issues. 1,000% apologize. Um, what's going on in my world? Okay, well, I just recently went to the San Diego Comic-Con parties and events, and that was a whirlwind. That was really, really fun. Met a lot of amazing people, felt like a superstar, got a lot of exercise, um, danced the night away, met met some former friends, former actors from shows. And I know you guys wanted like a really professional vlog, but I, I, I just, I haven't been out for a while, and I only got a camera phone. That's kind of professional. The audio ain't so good. My battery goes dead really quickly and um, just has a lot of issues. So I wanted to film more interviews or more vlog type stuff. Then I wanted to come back home and edit it because I got some editing software finally. Um, and I'm, I just started editing um, my another taco uh, cooking video. 
that'll be available next week. But I wanted to edit, you know, a, a professional vlog. But when I got home, I just wanted to share the video clips that I got with you guys. And I did that in a video. It's now in the members only section, but I'm sure you guys watched it. And it was a fun time. It was a really, really, really fun time. And I appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, every time I go out or I go to an event, I want to do bigger and be better vlogs, you know, more quality content, professional content, whatever you guys truly deserve. But it's, it's not within my means at the moment to do stuff like that um, nowadays. Um, so just please bear with me and work with me. I am trying to, to do some stuff for the future, make it a little bit better. But hey, if a lot of it looks like 80s or 90s, that's okay because that's the lifestyle I live if you want to be completely honest. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate you guys for, for dealing with that stuff. And um, so that event was really, really fun. And when I got back home, I was on cloud nine for a couple of days. But I got really, really sick after. I got really, really sick after. Um, people want to call it the coof. You know, the, the, I don't know what to say. You can't say anything on YouTube without it getting censured. But, um. I don't know if it was that. I don't really like to believe in that stuff. I'll call it the flu, a two-day flu or whatever. But for about three days, man, I was really, really sick. Um, and it was really, really tough, man. I couldn't even get out of bed. And it was tough to breathe and stuff like that. I've always had breathing problems and heart problems and, and, and other stuff. So I'm just going to call it a three-day flu, even though there probably is an actual thing called the C-O-V-I-D. You know, I just don't want to believe in it. Whatever. But I got over that, and that took about four or five days for me to even feel alive. But I was glad that I healed up, like, in three days, because normally my immune system, or whatever it is, when I get sick or ill, it lasts for months. And I typically have to go on antibiotics, uh, and my ears get flustered, everything gets congested, but it didn't look like that happened this time. So I am so thankful. I am so thankful for, for that not being the case. Um, cause when I get sick, I get sick, man. And I'm, and I, I'm out, I'm out for a good while. Cause I'm afraid of doctors and I don't like visiting doctors because they're always going to find something. Let's be honest with you. But then I started to, to, you know, get back to life. I had some emails and some other stuff I had to deal with because I'm trying to do a podcast and I'm trying to procure some really, really big guests. And I've got a few that I believe they're big, big time. And I was supposed to start the podcast this week. But because of my, my feeling sick and then some other things that are happening, I have to delay it for at least another three weeks. Um, cause I'm still working on the set design, some, some sound effects, and I'm trying to make it look like a decent podcast, you know, on a channel. And I'm still kind of formatting what I want the podcast to be about. You know, you have to have a segment, you have to have a show idea, and you have to have some other things to go along with it. Not just a let's talk like I'm doing now. You, you need something bigger and better you know, as a podcast, especially if you're going to do it online, not live in person. And um, so I'm still working on the concepts and stuff like that and the name. Uh, so if again, I've asked before, if you guys got some any names for the podcast, let me know down below or in the forum and I'll, I'll give it a whirl. But I guarantee you by September 1st, you're going to have an official first podcast in September on my channel with what I consider a very, very special guest. And I, I got to have a guest every week. I got to, regardless of what they do, how popular they are. Um, if it, if even it's one of you guys that have a very interesting career 
or work life or whatever, I'm going to have you guys on. Yes, there will be some conspiracy stuff in probably every podcast um, because I like that stuff and I want to ask my guests some questions, but it's not conspiracy oriented. It's going to be everything oriented. One week it might be political uh, and conspiracy oriented, or the next week it might be movie oriented or TV oriented or real life oriented or family oriented. Whatever the situation that I feel like would be good to talk about with that specific guest or that's going on in the world, it'll definitely have segments of that in every podcast. And I want to ask tough questions to some people. But again, I have to respect them if they don't want to talk about it. And I don't want to turn people off, you know. So it's it's an interesting thing to get around because Hollywood is sensitive. And there's a lot of topics that are like you can't talk about. Like just for an example, the other day I posted an interesting thing about Facebook. Uh, I went on Facebook And I saw a friend of mine made this post about the word chicken soup. Then she wrote, if you write the word chicken soup in the Facebook browser, that a child abuse warning comes up when you're searching chicken soup. So I did that. And a child abuse warning came up and I posted those pictures of the browser search from Facebook on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and whatever. And I was like, man, this is weird. How, when you look up the word chicken soup, do you get a child SA warning? What does chicken soup have to do with children and SA? Nothing. So why does the word chicken soup in the algorithm for Facebook create a child SA warning? Pretty interesting, guys. Pretty interesting. And um, let me see see how your guys' screen is doing because my screen keeps freezing. So I hope everything's live. I'm trying to put the comments on screen and... Let's see if we can get these comments on screen so I can at least read some of them while I'm doing it. But what does the word chicken soup have to do with, you know, an SA warning? Well, if you go back many years ago, and I study this stuff, and I look into stories, and the word pizza, the word pizza was a big issue. You know, and in those... P-E-D-O circles. Um, There's logos, images, symbolism. And there's words that associate the P-E-D-O world and that type of stuff. And one of those words is pizza. It's like a code name or a code word in emails or whatever for some people. That's the rumors. I can't prove it, but that's the rumors. When they say, oh, are you going to bring the pizza over tonight or something like that. I guess they're talking about somebody else, you know, but where does the word chicken soup, where does that word create a child SA warning on Facebook in the algorithm? I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's something that freaked me out. So I had to talk about it, but going back to what I was saying about Hollywood being insecure was after I posted these social media, you know, asking questions about the word chicken soup on Facebook, I got a bunch of people hitting me up. Well, I'm not going to say a bunch. It was two people, but one person in particular, you know, wrote it, wrote, hey, maybe you shouldn't post that. And I was like, why? And then another person also hit me up as well and said, hey, uh, you're you're an actor and you're a child actor. I don't think you should be writing those type of words on your social media. It'll make you look bad. So I technically got two people that I love and respect 
judging me and telling me not to post something. Like I did something bad by by exposing the word chicken soup and the Facebook algorithm. So it kind of hurt me, kind of hurt me. Um, you know, I feel like I'm getting judged and I'm just trying to show the truth behind the lies. And why is the word chicken soup create a child SA warning label on Facebook? It makes no sense to me. Just makes no sense to me. But again, when people judge me or whatever I post or my videos and they tell me, hey, don't do that. Hey, don't do that. It's like they're censoring me from me being who I truly am. And, you know, them saying, oh, you know, this ain't going to help you in your career. And it's like, oh, my God. Ugh. My career is already on the downfall. I don't care. Of course I want to. But why can't I talk about a Facebook algorithm and the word chicken soup and maybe expose something weird? Why can't I do that? I guess I'm not going to have an acting career after that again. That would just prove that Hollywood is into some dark stuff. So, I don't know. I don't know. But, a little bit of decaf iced coffee. I put it in the fridge to get cold. Um, But yeah, it just hurts me. You know, to be judged a lot for everything I say or do. And just, it makes you not want to do it. It makes you just want to not go live or not post anything. And it, you know, it makes you just want to like do nothing. And that's the thing that I hate. So I'm just going to be honest for anybody in the future. I love you guys. I know when they judge me or they do stuff, it comes from a good place in their heart because they do love me and care for me. But just. If you got nothing nice to say about anything that I posted or whatever, don't concern yourself with my career or my postings or whatever. And um, just let it go. Again, judge me on me. When we hang out, how we treat each other, judge me for that. Not for my hobbies, not for my interests, not for my political views. Judge me for that type of stuff. So that was something that interesting me. That was interesting to me that. Yeah, you're right. The stream is out of sync. So it is happening to you guys too, huh? Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on. So the stream the stream is out of sync. The only other thing I could think about doing is um, taking off my firewalls. Because I added a firewall the other day. Maybe maybe that'll help. Let me try to do that real quick and see if that helps. Because I've I've heard rumors that you're supposed to take off firewalls and, and do stuff like that. Because anything that messes with the internet can mess with your live streams. So let's see if that type of stuff helps. If it doesn't, I don't know what else to do, guys, except log off. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to turn off firewalls or other things that might be running in the background as I had to newly update my computer. I don't know if it'll help, guys. Um... We'll see. We'll see. Maybe that'll help. I hope so. Let me know. We'll figure it out little by little. All right. Uh, so I was just giving you guys the story about, about, um, yeah, it looks like it's still having issues. Huh. Let me do one other thing that might be affecting it. Sorry, guys. Again, I haven't went live for a while and. Maybe I should have did it on my phone. Um, maybe I can log back off, log back, log off, and log back in. See if that changes anything. Let me try to do that real quick, guys, just for shoots and giggles.
All right, what's up, everybody? I don't know. I turned everything off and started it again, and let's see if it works and if it helps out. And if it doesn't, 1,000% my apologies, guys. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, I was using a VPN, Jay Simmish. Um, I was using a VPN, but could be my processor, could be my graphics card. Could be a lot of different things, guys, that hinder hinder the video. Because um, I just recently had to do a bunch of things for my computer to even work. So you guys are going to have to bear with me. And hopefully it gets better. And if it doesn't, 1,000% my apologies. That's why sometimes... Um, I should go live like on my on my iPad or my phone or I just do videos outside, you know, instead of going live because I have technical issues a lot. Let me take off one of the banners. Maybe that'll help with the graphics. Who knows? Maybe there's too many graphics on screen. I don't know. I have an old graphic card and an old computer. All right. Well, speaking of computers and old stuff. That I've been working with. Um, my brother, um, who I love dearly, is in a rehab facility and um, trying to fix his life for basically like the fourth time. And again, I'm just hoping for the best. But he has a birthday coming up. And um, I don't really like to be in his life because there's too much pain there. And we have we're like Cain and Abel. And I have anger management skill problems and, and all this other stuff when, when I deal with him. And we just have a really turmoil, turmoil life together. But that being said, we still love each other and hope for the best, but we just can't be around each other. But long story short, his birthday's coming up and he, he made the attempt to, to change it and fix his addictions again. Um, at post 50 years of age, but his birthday's coming up and I decided to, um, he has like no technology or, or phone or stuff like that in the facility at the moment. Sorry, as you guys can see, I'm with my eyes down cause it's a very serious subject. Um, but he has like no technology. He pretty much lost everything in life. Hence why he went to rehab again. For like the fourth time, but now he's he's gonna finally do the entire plan, the entire rehab plan, where you stay in there for like ninety days, you you do all the courses, then you go to a facility and you live and you get treatment like in a I forget the name of it, but like a not a halfway house, but something else like that, like in that type of environment. So the plan is, from everything I know, he's gonna do the whole treatment. And thank God and everybody else that he was able to get it again, you know, where he was close to death for like the third or fourth time. But he has no technology and no money and stuff like that. And so his birthday's coming up in a couple of days and he might watch this video in the future. But so I pulled out my Zoom. Do you guys know what a Zoom is? It's like a Microsoft. Um mp3 player to compete with the ipod back in like 2007 or 8 or 9 and i bought a zoom instead of an ipod stupid decision at the time but i liked the way the zoom worked and i just recently watched guardians of the galaxy 3 i really enjoyed it i don't think i've given a review but i really enjoyed it with rocket but and the zoom is featured in guardians of the galaxy 3 Zune is featured a lot in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And it reminded me of my Zune. And then I started thinking about the gift for my brother. And I wanted to put a bunch of music on there because he's allowed not to have a phone. And he's allowed to have like an MP3 player and a, like small things right like that while he's in his 90 days. He's probably like 35 or 40 days in. But, um, so he's allowed to have like an MP3 player, a radio, and the Zoom does radio. So I pulled out my Zoom 
I was thinking I already had a bunch of 30 gigabytes of music on there. And, um, you know, I turned it on and I know they don't make the software for it anymore. Uh, Microsoft discontinued everything, the firmware, the this, the that, the blah, 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 blah. And um, let me get the comments back on screen. It looks like everything's working a little bit better. Thank goodness. And I promise I'm going to be talking to you guys in, in a couple of minutes. So I love you guys. Please stay tuned. Uh, thank you for listening, by the way. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, so what I was saying is, you know, they discontinued the firmware, the updates, the this, the that, the blah, blah, blah. And I knew it was going to be a hassle to get it started and to put some of my brother's favorite type of music, the house, the techno, the trance, and stuff like that, to put that on the Zoom. But I thought it already had like a lot of my favorite music and stuff like that on it. So I, 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 I had trouble getting the Zoom started. I had to plug it in, long story short. Took me a little bit of while to get the battery and everything connected. And then it needed firmware just to load up. It kept saying read error, read error, read error. Then I had to go online on Reddit and this and that and started to do all this stuff to just get the Zoom to open up. <laughs> and I did it after like a whole five, six hours of reading on Reddit and blah, blah, blah. Then I got it to open up to see what files are on there, what music, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I love that word. Blah, blah, blah. That should be a t-shirt. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that should be on my, uh, I don't want to say on my tombstone, but blah, 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 because I talk a lot. Um, so I got it started with like a firmware 3.9 or something somehow from like 2011 or 12. Then there was no music on it. Nothing. I guess it all erased with the battery not being charged for like five or six or seven years or whatever it's been, there was nothing on there. I was like, I thought I had music on there. So now I'm like, great. Okay. I wanted to put my brother's favorite music on there, but I thought at least if I couldn't do that, there would be a ton of rock and roll, R and B, slow jams, hip hop, classic, you know, alternative 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, from 80s, from what I used to put on it, 90s as well. But nothing was on it. So I, I got to update everything. Right? Then I start looking through my computer or, or on the internet for the software. And again, the software is not being made. It hasn't been updated. So I had to go through a bunch of things just to get the software downloaded and to load on my newer 2000, like 12 computer or whatever this computer is. It's like a X86, 64, whatever. I don't know, 64 bit, 86 bit. I don't know. But oh, it took me another three, four hours to get the software. Then I finally got it working. Then I would connect the Zoom and it saw the Zoom. And it said, Your Zoom is connected. There's no music. Okay. So then I go to my hard drives. I pull out one of my hard drives that I know has a lot of music on it. I can't, I can't find my music. I thought it was on one of my hard drives already connected. It ain't there. Started looking through all my other hard drives. I have a couple other hard drives hidden or like in storage boxes or whatever. Couldn't find my music. So now I have to go online, download a bunch of music. That's my brother's favorites and all that. And that took like another two, three hours to get a bunch of good music to put on the Zoom. Right? So I did. Then I put on one album to test the Zoom to see if it worked. And it worked. I listened to it, sounded real good. I was like, all right, cool. Now I could put the rest of, you know, the, the, the albums and stuff that I downloaded that I have on, like, iTunes and this and that. So I went to bed, and I was like, all right, I'll work on it the next day. And mind you, I have a time limit. I had to get it all in the mail by Tuesday, which was yesterday. For my brother's birthday, which is coming up on Friday, because it'll take a couple of days to get there. So then I turn on the computer and everything. Now my computer won't work. Keep getting a beeping error or this error or that error. And then I read somewhere that updating the Zoom and trying to get it working on an, a newer computer like a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 might cause problems. 
to, to do it on a Windows 7 or a Windows 8. I did read that before I did it. I still did it. Now my computer ain't working. I had to reinstall Windows 10. I had to do all this other stuff, get all my drivers loaded, and this and that, uh, and my websites and, and everything like that. I didn't have a restored disk or whatever. I just had a lot of problems. Okay. That took me another five, six hours like on Saturday or that was on Sunday. All right. Now on Monday, I got everything, my websites, everything looks like it's working again. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, thank God. I need my computer. It's one of my only things in life. Then I got the Zoom software again loaded. I had to load it all again. And I was hoping that problems wouldn't occur that happened last time where I turn off the computer and it won't start again. But it didn't. It seemed to be working better this time a little bit. Then I connected my Zoom. Now it wouldn't show up. Remember, previously when I connected it, I put one album on the Zoom and it worked. Then my computer did whatever it did. I changed it. Now I got it all back up to date. Now I connect the Zoom to the software. It doesn't read it. It says you need firmware 4.8. I just put 3.9 on the, the Zoom a couple days ago. Well, now you need firmware 4.8. So I went online, started reading, downloaded everything that they said to do it. I did all the steps. I changed the text. I did the this, the system 32, the blah, blah, blah. All these damn things for like another six hours because it takes me that long. I'm not that good. I could not get any music on the Zoom. I, but I finally got the firmware updated to 4.8, right? Now they're saying this will make it work with the Zoom software again on your Windows 10. Then I connect it. It doesn't read it. It says read error on my Zoom. Read error. Then when I disconnect it and I look at it, the album's still on there and it says firmware 4.8. But every time I connect it to the computer, to the software to put MP3s on it or albums, nothing. Nothing. So I went and did it on another computer that I have of Windows 8. I have a Windows 8, little, small, little computer thing. I set it all up, hooked up the monitors and everything. It's a very slow computer. It's like an all-in-one. And same thing occurred. Read error on a Windows 8 machine. Then I have another Windows, I have a Windows uh, 9 computer. An all-in-one here, like an old one that's just lying on my, my little desk area. I did the same thing for that one. Followed all the things, connected it, and I did the thing. There's something where you call change compatibility, where you change the program to work with, like, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 9, whatever. You can change the compatibility. I did all the outcomes. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. So... Long story short, the updating Zoom was a nightmare. So I only had one album on there, which is one of my brother's favorite. But it has a radio function, and my brother can listen to radio. So I still sent him the Zoom yesterday with a, you know, happy birthday message. And hopefully the radio, if radio, sta I checked the radio, it was working. There was a bunch of stations. And hopefully he at least has something to listen to when he lies down because he has no technology as of right now for at least another 25 days. So, or 30 days or whatever it is while he goes through the program. So I hope it brings him some comfort to listen to the radio. I'm sure he can find some podcasts on radio stations like Coast to Coast was one of them we used to listen to back in the days and stuff like that. But I checked the radio, I gave him headphones, and let's hope for the best, man. It's a gesture of goodwill to my brother. Bauer, interact with the chat. I told you I would, Philip, but I said for a few minutes I was going to let you know what's going on in my world. Again, other podcasts don't interact with their chat every five minutes. 
They wait till the end. Then they start talking to people. You know, they do super chats and all that other stuff. So, relax. This will separate the real fans from the not fans. <laughs> you get it? Um, so that's what's been going on in my world. And then, like I talked about, I was trying to figure out my podcast. Uh, I got sick for a little while. And then I had to update some stuff with my brother. And, um, yeah. Not too much, but it's a lot for me. And, you know, that's where it's at. Plus, you know, I, I got to do all the things in my in my apartment. I got to clean it. I actually got to clean it, do a little bit of a better job of spring cleaning, you know, pull out some alcohols or whatever that stuff is called, pine saw. Because, you know, when you live in a little box, things get messy and they get dirty and basically becomes you. It smells like you, looks like you, you know, you know like because all you do is graze in a little box. <laughs> And it's a hot box, especially during the summer. So it's pretty interesting. All right, guys. So I'll read a few comments. And then I want to get to a Flash review of the movie The Flash. I have some good things to say about it. And, um, yeah. So let's get to some former comments from Brent Mania. He called it the Bauer Power Hour. That was one of the names I was always thinking about. Um, and... Yeah, I just don't think it fits a need to name it after myself because I, I really don't want it to be about me, you know, but I do love that name and it's funny and I appreciate it. An Hour with Bauer. That's another good one, Martin. Um, Uh-oh, don't say it. PM, it's code for child traffickers. Use personal message. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I guess you guys are talking about that other stuff. Um, you live? Yes, I'm live, Derek. For real. I think I already read some of these, or I mean, I saw them, but I just didn't talk about them. That's better. Your stream is off. Yes, Hollywood comes from the Holly Tree. Yes, Jay. Hollywood comes from the Holly Tree. The woods was used to make Wanda and other ceremonial objects. Yeah, I've, heard, I've read that story. Defrag the HD. <laughs> Sending them good vibes to you. Dab one up. Hope he makes it. Praying for my brother. Thank you, guys. Melatonin. I have a 30 gigabyte Zoom, and I love it more than the iPod. Yeah, if I can get it working. I mean, now I don't have it. I'm sure my brother will give it back to me, but mine is white with transparent. Uh, louder with Bowder. <laughs> That's funny. It's like louder with Crowder. <laughs> this is a funny question. Any tips on picking up chicks? Man, if I, I mean, I have some, I don't know if they work. Uh, I have gotten chicks on many different occasions. You, I don't know if using lines or my personality or whatever, but I ain't got any right now. Oh, that's right. In the picture of this thumbnail, I put Fernanda, right? Yeah, I put Fernanda Romero. She's a big, like, Mexican superstar. Um, I love her. But, yeah, I put her in the thumbnail. So, of course, you guys are going to talk about chicks. Hey, you got to put a chick in the thumbnail to to bring some people out, you know? But uh, any tips on picking up chicks? Uh, there's a lot of those man shows, you know, where the, they mansplain to women and they say, women, you ain't nothing. A men is better in the hierarchy. There's a lot of those shows. I, I forget the names of them. I watch a few of them. They get annoying after a while. And the girls, are, they always try to make the girls look stupid or dumb. But they do prove a lot of points in terms of the male, you know, how the male acts and women are easier to get men and it's harder for men to get women. And it's interesting, but yeah, these podcasters attitudes and just really, really combative, really, really disgusting toward women a lot. I, you know, but again, the women don't do themselves any justice with the way they present themselves either. 
on certain situations or their knowledge of the world. Again, we're all stupid. Some are more stupid than others. I'm probably in that category. But any tips on picking up chicks? The younger chicks like confidence. The long, younger chicks, let's say all chicks, all chicks like confidence. So if you got a good job, you're confident in your career, you're not dealing with anxiety, depression, or drugs, or all the other bullshit stuff that people have, confidence, man, confidence goes a long way. Of course, if you're prettier or more good looking, it helps, but confidence and passion I've lacked that for many years now, but back in the days, I, I had a little bit of arrogance and a little bit of confidence. You know, I was working on TV movies, thinking I'm famous, whatever, whatever heck I was into, you know, ride, riding in what I call fancy cars and stuff like that. I had confidence in stuff, you know, so I was, I was hooking up maybe not with everybody, but I was getting, I was getting, getting what I'm getting is good. But confidence, man. Um, and I've lacked that from for many years now. And I need to get it back. But I would say confidence, man. Confidence goes a long way. Flirt always. Flirt all the time. Online, whatever. Send them DMs. If you like some girl, tell her what's up. Make sure they're not married or they don't have a boyfriend. Or And they're definitely over over 20 years of age at least. Salute would be a good podcast name. Yeah. With all that sag stuff going on. Yeah, you can't do that. I'm pumped for football season, Donnie. Jason, I've already told you guys about my first kiss. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. I remember it. It's on one of the other live streams or something. So I'm not going to go into it right now. But my first kiss was with. Vegalicious. Fergie from uh what was it? Kids Incorporated K I D S O looks like we made it. we kids in her name was Stacy Ferguson. We played with Martika and everybody else on that damn show. I used to visit the set all the time. I was in the audience in a lot of episodes, like as the crowd. Um, I was spending a lot of time in that studio. That was filmed at KTLA, I believe it was. KTLA Studios. I think it's now called Hollywood Studios. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. I was a young guy hanging out in the audience. Um, God, I got to get all the old episodes. See if you could see me in the audience dancing and, and whatever. But yeah, I became friends with them. And I don't know. We decided to play Spin the Bottle one day. And I kissed Stacey Ferguson. It was a simple child childish kiss. But she was my first kiss. And then I met her many times, not many times, at least three more times later in life. And interesting. Interesting. But my first real big, let's call it French kiss or going crazy, was with a girl at Lollapalooza. That's right. It was Lollapalooza, the second one. It was. I met a girl at Lada Palooza, the second one. I believe it was in Indio. I forget where it was. Uh, Irvine? I don't know. But yeah, that was a big French kiss. All I wanted to do was kiss after that. Like, they had like a little playground area where I met this girl. We were dancing. We were holding hands. All around, and then we went to this little playground area. And, you know, I finally kissed or did a big, big kiss. And, um... Yeah, man, like tingles throughout my body. And I was like, I guess that's what they say you feel when you kiss. But all I ever wanted to do from that moment on was kiss any girl I saw. I was like, come here, let me kiss her. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Ooh. Loved your work on the one years. Oh, thank you, Alice Coyote. Love that name. What's up, Scootley? I'd like to hear you speak about the UFO discussion going on. It's a fun topic. Yeah. Uh, something's going on. There's some sort of an agenda with the UFO stuff, man. Um, why are they talking about it? Why is everything being released? Why is it going on now? 
is there really an invasion going on? Uh, do UFOs really exist? Blah, blah, blah. Are they American made? Are they Russian made? You know what I mean? Like too many questions. Are they aliens, UAPs, whatever the new term for it is. But they're hiding a lot of the stuff politically and they got everybody talking about UFOs and this and that. Again, are they preparing for an invasion? Are they preparing for a war? And then they can blame it on aliens or UFOs or and then also there's rumors that when a new technology comes around, that aliens start to appear or UFOs, there's a lot of more sightings or whatever. And if you watch some of these UFO hunters or sky watchers on YouTube and, and stuff like that, that um, there's a lot of like video footage from, you know, they call it the ISS, even though if that really exists. Um but there's a lot of these little flying objects over the oceans, like hundreds of them. And you see them and they're not planes and they're not what we would consider, you know, a vehicle of some sort that we know of. And you watch these sky watchers and they show you all this stuff every day. There's like a new video somewhere. So you got to think back in the days, there was a lot of sightings when new technology or they put, they put the first atom bomb out. They were saying UFOs, that's like a, if UFOs watch or aliens watch our life, you know, the atom bomb technology was something that could affect everybody and maybe other civilizations if they exist and everything. I have questions for everything. Um, but they were coming around during the atom bomb time or whatever. And, just quickly, let me throw this out there because it's a funny video I saw the other day and I have to talk about it. With the release of the movie Oppenheimer, uh, you know, they're starting to show, you know, the atom bomb videos and stuff like that of like buildings exploding or them testing the atom bomb and this and that. <laughs> and there's one video in particular where it's on a big building or a house or a structure. Um, and the camera's rolling. Then you hear the countdown or whatever. Then the bomb explodes. Then you see the building explode. And in the camera frame, you see the building explode and everything. And that's the video. Well, if you have any critical thinking, if you have any common sense, think about that. Why is the film footage available, not burnt? What happened to the camera? How is the camera survive? And how is the camera within, I don't know, 200 feet of the house? Oh, it was on a Zoom, Mikey. They were three miles away. No, they didn't have Zooms that go, went that good on houses or buildings back in the 50s or 60s or whenever they did this technology. So the the how uh, the camera is closer than everybody appears. Oh well, they put it in a casing. They built a titanium casing for the film and all that. Maybe he was in a refrigerator like Indiana Jones. <laughs> all right, whatever you guys want to believe, whatever you guys want to believe about that footage. If it's an atom bomb, it's twenty thousand times more powerful than this bomb or that bomb and yet an old a camera with radiation doesn't affect the film footage even if it's in a box the radiation it's close to it doesn't affect it blah 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 whatever but that was funny something funny i saw that just made me go ha, ha, ha. i don't believe that bs um but back to the technology with ufos so UFOs arrive and are sometimes around that new technology. Well, we have a new technology that just arrived. No, I'm not talking about 5G. Nuclear reactors have just went online again for electricity, but I believe in the state of Georgia. I think America is now going to start adopting the nuclear power again, better than they were before. And I'm not saying that's a new technology. But again, if 
UFOs arrived around in America around the last, you know, radiation or nuclear bombs or atomic bombs or whatever you want to call it. We just opened up a couple of um, atomic factories, I believe in Georgia and somewhere else. Maybe that explains why they're here again. They're checking in on us. They're like, what are you guys doing? I don't know. But there's something at play. And believe whatever you want to believe. Don't let me tell you how to believe. Um, there is a theory of what was that thing called? Um, where they're going to fake an alien invasion. Um, they're going to fake an alien invasion or the return of Jesus or something to get to get everybody back in line, you know, to believe in, believing in something else for more control. I forgot the name of it. Forgive me, guys. Oh, yeah. So who wrote this? Pee Wee Herman passed away, man. What a blow, huh? What a blow. I wanted to make a joke about Pee Wee. Um, I was like, oh, you know, Pee Wee Herman passed away, but I still got my Pee Wee. It's a bad joke. But, I, dude, I loved Pee Wee's Playhouse. Uh, man, I loved Pee Wee's Playhouse. And um, controversy aside... From Paul Rubens. Controversy aside with, you know, whatever he did sexually or whatever. I I don't want to judge people off of that. He made a lot of us laugh and love and have a good time at Pee Wee's Playhouse. So, damn, what a shock, man. It's sad whenever people you grew up loving and watching pass away. I just hope they're all remembered in some good way. If I ever pass away... And, you know, some of you guys still like me or find out about it. I hate saying stuff like this because sometimes it manifests itself into reality. But I just hope that people go, you know what? I liked him. He showed his heart. He was a good guy. I enjoyed him. He made me laugh. He made me cry. He showed me some stuff in the world that I didn't know existed. I like the guy. I'm, I'm going to miss him. That's what I hope for the best. Camera point is a good one, man. Oh yeah, Oppenheimer was a Nazi, man. You know, we all know what's going on. <laughs> we all, we all. I live that Indiana Jones. Look at, I love that spotlight. Yeah, I got a spotlight. I love that Nazi, uh, um, Indiana Jones type storyline that's happening in real days. Chairman, what? Yeah, I was living nearby Fukushima in 2011. They never tell you over 700 Japanese died from radiation there. <laughs> and your name is Cham Chairman Meow. <laughs> Video game Pollock. Bauer knows his S for sure. Oh, I got some super chats. Oh, my God. I just saw that. Thank you, guys. Brent Mania, always supporting. Hopefully, your mental health is doing well. I, come on. I'm crazy. We all know it. Everybody's crazy. You cannot digest as many chemicals that the world has presented to us since the 70s or 80s um, and they put in the air without people all of a sudden becoming more mental health problems than there were many, many years ago. And it seems like one out of every three have an issue. It seems like one out of every five is, is um, what's the word? Autistic. And again, I can't link it to the back, the VAX. I can't link it to that. I uh, can't link it to the metals in the sky, the 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 chemicals we digest, the metal metals we eat, even off of the plate. All of that affects our body, man. So there's no wonder a lot of people have you know these issues. Plus, there's radio waves everywhere, cell phones. Internet, uh, everything around you. Radio waves, electronic waves. Wow. It's like X-Men. We're starting to develop superhuman people. It's like X-Men. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> we got a Professor Xavier somewhere sitting in a chair going... 
Michael Bauer is mentally crazy, but Michael Bauer has the ability to look at the future and he knows the knowledge of BS. Michael Bauer is an X-Men. Donkey Lips, the X-Men. <laughs> oh, I got a bad case of bubble guts. Oh, God. Beloved chatter. Come on, man. Yeah, y'all ain't going to let me live it down. But thank you for paying for it. Any advice? Yeah, eat better. Or sing the song, Bubba Guts. I got the bubble guts. While you're on the toilet, I got the bubble guts. And it's rocking to the beat. <laughs> Again. Uh, you guys take the most ridiculous moments or things and you make it like an issue, like it's something bad for me. But some of you guys enjoyed it, probably made you laugh. That's the most important thing. All these other podcast shows want to talk, talk about it, make fun of me, whatever. It's all good. I love everybody. But hey, I made a, I've made some people laugh or whatever, and that's the most you can do in life. That's the most you can do in life. Um, black and white. I'm artistic. <laughs> we will always have his amazing art to remember him and how amazing he was forever. He was born in New York City, I thought. How did he become a Nazi? I haven't seen the movie Oppenheimer yet. A friend of mine's in it. And um, I haven't had a chance to watch it. Maybe he was born in New York City. Maybe I got to do a little more research, man. Um, but I, uh, the rumors are he was working with the Nazis. So. What's your, I love video comment. He puts 420. We know what you do, video comment. We know what you do. Have you had those loaded tots from Domino's yet? No, man. Um, I unfortunately... Dude, I did buy pizza. Remember, I had the Mutant Ninja Turtle pizza maybe a month ago. Um, but no, I, I don't really order a lot of food out. I don't really have a lot of money for it. And it's really bad for me. Um, even worse than the food that I buy for myself that's sometimes bad. But no, I have not had it. Uh, I haven't had a, tot, a, what's it called, a tater tot in many years. I do make hash browns. You know, the little frozen McDonald type hash browns here every once in a while. Put them in the air fryer. Favorite dish you ever ate? Oh, come on, man. You're asking a fat guy. Every dish is my favorite, <laughs> Brent. But uh, I'm just going to say a couple that I loved growing up and I still love to this day. And I haven't had some of them in a while, but I used to love fried shrimp. They, it was called butterfly fried shrimp, I guess, where they would cut the shrimp in half and fold it out and then bread it and fry it. And it would come with some French fries and like a little bit of a lemon and some like cocktail sauce or something. Man, when I was growing up, that was a specialty that my dad would buy for me. And um, I loved it. I, I freaking loved it. And I would tell my dad, could I get, could, could I get fried shrimp? Could I get fried shrimp? And it always only came with like three pieces, at most four. But like, it was always like 10 bucks or whatever, even back in the days, you know, so it would cost my dad a lot of money. And I'd get a cherry Coke with it. What did they call it? The uh, Roy Rogers? Or that was a, not a cherry Coke, uh, a seven up with gr cherry grenadine. I think that was the Roy Rogers. No, that was the Shirley Temple. Forgive me. I would always order the Shirley, Shirley Temple, but I love Cherry Coke and everything. Um, and then another one, really one of my favorites was growing up was, what was that beef called? That little, it's like a thin beef that was frozen. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. Gosh. Cheese it, beef it, something like that. It's these little thin pieces of like, oh, steak them, steak them. Steakum. I used to love Steakum, dude. My dad would buy the little packages of Steakum, cut them up, put a little bit of hash brown type cut up potatoes with. Oh, I'm a meat and potatoes guy, basically. But um, my favorite food that I ever ate. God, it's so hard. I really got to think about it. There's so many meals. But 
I still to this day, and I ate it the other day, is egg toast. I, I just love it. I just put a fried piece of toast or bread, wheat bread specifically, with a poached egg and a little bit of butter. And then I put it on the toast. And I do like three or four pieces. I eat more than normal all the time. But I put like a poached egg on the toast. And then the yolk is runny. And then it soaks into the bread and everything. Then I put some pepper. Because I love pepper. Yes, I do. I love pepper. How about you? And then I put it all together. And man, it's just one of my favorites. Poached egg on toast with butter and pepper, man. Oh, fantastic. You're getting me hungry, man getting me hungry. I've been eating salad the last couple of days. Um, what kind of salad was it? It's not chicken. Oh, no, it's the little bit of steak. I had the carne meat left over, so it's like steak salad. Oh, my goodness. Scootly with a big donation. Thank you, brother. Got to support. Is that your avatar? I love it. Is that you? You got the redhead beard. Love it. You a ginger. Got to support. I'm glad I made it to the live for once. I'm always busy or asleep. Yeah. I don't know when I go live, man. I need to be more continuity. Scootly, all I can do is say thank you, brother. Consider becoming a member if you'd like. You know, for you can watch all this content later when I put it behind the paywall. But all I can say is I love you, thank you, and I appreciate it. Donnie Darko, beam me up, Scotty. Stay cool. <laughs> Scootly. Scootly. Scottly. I'm a big Star Trek fan. Big Star Trek fan. Many people don't know this, but I got a part on Picard about a year and a half ago, but I couldn't do it due to mandates and restrictions. And it was the season finale or the series finale of Picard. <laughs> it ended up being the series finale of Picard with all the next generation members where I could have had a little part on it, but I got the job. And then once they found out I wouldn't, I didn't, I didn't take the job. I didn't take the job. And I also didn't take the job. <laughs> all right, guys, I wanted to do this re review real quick. Then we'll come back and answer some more questions, but, I wanted to give my thoughts on the Flash movie because I watched that the other night and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so let me, I am a huge Flash fan. Let me see if we can show this a little bit better. Probably not going to show that well because of all the green screen stuff. Maybe if I get it right in the screen. I have a Justice League Flash action figure. Goodness gracious, it doesn't show very well except when it's close to me. But I have a Justice League Flash action figure, one of my favorite toys that I got. Um, I also got a Superman up there as well. But I'm a huge Flash fan. I watched the TV series, the first one in 1990, I believe it was. And I've always liked the storyline of the Flash. Because it was in the Back to the Future realm of possible time travel and stuff like that. When I was reading the comic books. And I love that stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm not going to give a review of everything Flash, you know. But the, the the TV series, the newer one, just ended after, what, five or six seasons or something like that. And it just had its closing episode maybe about two months ago. And overall, it was a great show. I mean, there's a viral video of the first season with Kevin Smith watching oh, the spoiler alerts. There's a viral video from a few years back of Kevin Smith watching one of the first episodes of the Flash TV series on CW where he's crying when Flash is witnessing his mother die. Um, and he's crying and it was just amazing. And that's how I, I was crying as well when I watched it. So watching that Kevin Smith video just... It would have been like if you guys were watching me watch a live TV show or movie. And I want to do that stuff. I see a lot of people online show themselves watching episodes, watching movies. I don't know how they get away with the copyright or the trademarks or the this or the that. I don't know how they do it. 
but I want to do it, but I don't know how they do it. So until I know how they do it and how to edit it, I, I can't do it. But I want to do that stuff for all the movies that I watch. So if anybody has any knowledge on how to get away with it or the editing techniques or whatever they use to get away with the copyright, please let me know. Hit me up on social media. I need to figure this out because I want to watch movies live and I want to react. And then I want to have a video for you guys, whether it be on a Patreon or wherever, a full version or a smaller version on YouTube or whatever. But that being said, I was a big fan of the series. Um, I'm not going to go into flaws or whatever, but I enjoyed it. And again, we all know the history of this Flash movie that just came out. The Flash, the newer Flash was presented in the Justice League movie, and they cut out a lot from the Flash. I have not seen the Schneider cut. I have not seen it. Where there's more additions of the Flash or, or, or um, what's the robot guy's name? I'm so stupid sometimes. Cyc Cyc not Cyclops. Oh, God. Whatever. My brain, guys. Okay. I know there's additional scenes in the Schneider Cut for the Justice League that I need to watch. And I haven't been able to do that. But this movie, we all know the controversy with him being arrested, with doing drugs, and Ezra Miller. We all, we all know the controversy, this and that. Again. But the movie tanked. The movie tanked. And it, a month later, it's on vi video on demand. And I was able to, to get it the other day and watch it. And the movie tanked. Whether it's because of woke BS or it's the people fighting back against giving faith in somebody that causes so much harm to, to women, children, whatever, uh, you know, in public eyes or drugs or alcohol or violence or whatever. Maybe that's America fighting back. You know, the, we're not going to put up with studios and hiring people with bad practices or bad people or whatever. I can't control any of that. All I can control is my fandom for The Flash and to go into this movie not wanting to look and be reminded of all the issues that the actor has. People say you should boycott people like that. You're absolutely right. But again, I don't want to boycott actors that are acting. I want to boycott them in what they do in real life. And I know boycotting their movies is one way for them not to get hired again. But that's also in addition to cancel culture, if you think about it. Again, in the government, in today's government, you can do and say all the wrong things and still be hired and still be in office. But you do and say one wrong thing in your regular job. If you work at Walmart, you get fired automatically. Can't work again. Should that be the way for movies? Not really. But again, you don't want bad people to star in movies. And... It's a weird thing to think about. It. You know, we can go into that in another day. Um, again, because I've made mistakes, and I'm sure I'm going to be caught in 4K with something in the future. Should that limit my ability to ever work in a movie again? It shouldn't, in my opinion. But again, Ezra Miller is somebody who's on a different scale of being bad or drugs and alcohol than I would be. I hope so. Maybe I should, if I ever get famous again, maybe I should do all that crazy stuff. <laughs> I went from a good Nickelodeon star to a has-been to a comeback, and now I'm the villain. Everybody loves the villain. But let's get into the movie. First off, dude, it looked fantastic. The colors and everything were fantastic. It brought back nostalgia. It looked like a big budget feature. And it had a lot of cameos and all that. But let's talk about the storyline and the actors. Ezra Miller did a fantastic job with two different characters. That's tough for an actor to do. It's tough for an actor to do. Then on top of that, they filmed it 
I don't know how they filmed it. When he was on screen, both of them together, I couldn't tell it was CGI or whatever that stuff is called where they, they put a face on it. I couldn't tell. There was a couple of moments that I did, but it didn't take me out of the movie. But real early on, I learned that this movie was going to be about Paradox or Flashpoint. Where the if you're in the Flash lore, you understand that storyline about Flash traveling to the future or the past and changing things and, and all that. And I knew it was going to be about that. I enjoyed the chemistry between Ezra Miller and the supporting cast. I loved Ron Silver as the father who's in jail for the supposed murder of um, Barry's mother. And I loved the actress, whether you want to call it a diversity hire or whatever, she seemed to be a Spanish act actress with an accent. But she did a fantastic job. And she looked like Ezra Miller. And they, I could see them, Ron Silver, blending to make a baby that looked like you know, Barry Allen. Um, so I didn't have any problems with the DEI that they that they put in the movie. You know, Irish Allen, she's not Irish Allen West yet. But uh Irish West was in there as well. And those were nice scenes. Those were nice scenes. Cause I know that whole storyline. Sorry, I'm getting off topic and I'm I'm not saying what I want to say. I'll try to make it a little easier as possible because I talk a lot. And my brain goes everywhere. But um, I love the member berries with the Batman, the Batfleck early on. There's a lot of cameos in this that I truly appreciated. Um, and when he was running, I liked how the director took the landscapes and he filmed the landscapes like traveling on a road or in the, you know, on, in a building or around a hill. Then he added the flash who was actually running on together to where it wasn't just a, a solid road. And then the flash goes by it. The road was moving as well as the flash was running at the same time. And that effect is pretty damn awesome. If you're a, in the flash lore. That was a pretty damn awesome directing effect. Then that being said, when he ran, I like the choice that Ezra Miller made. He probably made it in justice league. I just didn't really witness it till now of him doing a peacock move while he was running. So instead of just running, he decided to, like a expand the energy type peacock move. Everybody look at me and how I run and it's not normal running. It's the flash running. I thought that was a brilliant, brilliant choice as an actor. Cause anything you can do to separate yourself from just an average person running will look good on camera. Anytime you could peacock something different, it'll look good on camera. And I just thought it was really fun to watch. And he looked like he had speed that I've never seen. Then when he goes into the circle, the paradox world, the flashpoint where he's running backwards, but he's witnessing the future, the past, and all that other stuff, man, there are cameos galore. He passes events and everything and people, and you got to slow it down and watch it in 4K and you got to go, oh, my God, there's that person. There's the gorilla. There's there's uh, so many things. And I guess this movie takes place after Justice League, not long after Justice League. So Flash is still learning his abilities. And it was just fun. It was just a good movie, good acted. Special effects were fun to watch. The storyline was pretty intense and emotional. There was a little bit of emotions that I didn't understand, like with Barry and his mother at the end of the movie. And I thought Ezra Miller could have done a better job with that. 
portraying those actual emotions for his mother instead of just yelling, that's our mother you're talking about when he was conversing with the other Barry Allen. I'm just being honest. Edra Miller, he's not the greatest actor. <laughs> he did a fantastic job for what he is, but he, he hasn't stretched his emotional muscles enough to understand the Barry Allen character and his mother relationship. The actor from the TV series did a better job of conveying those emotions of losing his mother and also at one point having to let his mother die again than Ezra Miller did in the movie. That's just my acting clash moments, and he, he hasn't stretched it all enough. He clearly doesn't understand emotions. That's why he does drugs and he does all this other bad stuff because he doesn't understand emotions and where they come from and where they're going and he doesn't know how to bring them in. That's just my two cents on that. But I love the additions of the Batfleck. I love seeing him again. And I love seeing the Michael Keaton come back. That was fantastic. They had the stupid lines like, let's go nuts and I'm the Batman and stuff like that. That was really, really fun to see. And I love seeing, sorry, I had a little burp. I love seeing the, the, the car, the bat wing, the equipment, the bat suit, and all of that stuff represented. I loved every minute of it. Thought it was fantastic. It looked like they recreated the bat cave from the Tim Burton movies, like to a T. And the computer technology and everything, man, I was having fun every moment because that's my childhood as well as those Batman movies. And then they had the addition of the Supergirl, the Kara, uh, Kara, um, and to find out that Superman, spoiler alert, was killed <laughs> by Zod. On his way to Earth, and Kara only made it. My goodness, what a great storyline. I know these are alternate universes as he Barry Allen messed with the timeline. I enjoyed the fighting scenes. And then the movie became, you know, live, die, repeat at the end, basically, with the one Barry Allen, the Flash that was wearing the bat suit, converted to the Flash suit the Flash bat suit, and it became that movie Live, Die, Repeat. And the original Barry Allen knew what he had to do, that he couldn't change the Flashpoint, and that he was going to have to die and kill, kill the other Barry Allen. And I wish Barry Allen would have killed the other Flash instead of it being the Flash from the future killing the Flash that became the Flash in order to destroy themselves ever being created or born. I wish it was actually Barry Allen killing himself, having to kill himself. The emotional stakes would have been that. And people are like, it was Barry Allen killing Barry Allen. No, it was the evil entity Barry Allen that was created instead of the original Flash that went into that paradox. I just wish it was from the, the original Flash that started it all, that had to realize he had to kill, you know, the other Flash. I just thought that would have been a very better, better emotional ending or arc to that character. But Ezra Miller couldn't have handled it as an actor. <laughs> it's my opinion. Uh, then we get back to Barry Allen. He seems to be in back to the normal Earth or world. Then we get a George Clooney. Batman reference at the end. Um, so we all now know that he's not in the same universe, that there's multiverses now that were created, and he's in the DC multiverse. And that Flash can never go back to his original time frame, and he's forever going to be in that Flashpoint or that paradox that he created. Um, fantastic. There's multiple flashes. Again, there's many flash cameos in that paradox world. They have the original flash from the TV show. They have the Barry Allen from the recent TV show. 
they got the comic book Barry Allen's. They got the Reverse Flash. There's so many cameos and characters in that in that group, man. It was just fantastic to watch. Long story short, dude, I enjoyed the Flash, and James Gunn called it the best movie ever, the best DC movie ever, and he got a lot of feedback for that because people said it wasn't. A lot of people didn't like it for whatever you know their review is, and then people are like, James Gunn lied to us. Well, you got to remember, James Gunn is now taking over the DCU. James Gunn is also changing the timelines, the storylines, the this, that. He's changing everything up. He's coming out with a movie called Superman Legacy, which I'm really looking forward to. And I see you, James. I see you, brother. I know you commented in, in, a, in a direct message on one of my, my videos talking about you a while back. I know we cool. I love you, James. Thank you. Look at that. I'm dropping things. I'm dropping names. It's what I'm doing. Some amazing people know about me, and that makes me feel wonderful. Wonderful. I've met James a few times in life, auditioning and stuff like that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to come back as an actor, James, if you want to hire me. Whenever all this stuff ends. <clears throat> All right, that being said, um, he's creating the new DC universe and this and that, and he has to sell the Flash movie. Beyond all the controversies, he has to sell it. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think he lied when he said it was his favorite DC movie <clears throat> besides the original Superman, or it was the greatest movie, whatever, or greatest superhero movie he's seen in a while. I believe he truly believes that. Again, he's not going to rate his own movies, Guardians of the Galaxy. He's not going to rate any Marvel movies because he's in the DCU. So out of the recent DCU movies that he saw, he had a good time like I did because he loves The Flash and he knows the storyline. And he, he probably had as good of a time as I did where I call it a damn good movie. I enjoyed every part of it. And I think he really believed it was the greatest superhero movie besides the original Superman in his eyes from DC. I really truly think he believed it when he said it. Although since it tanked, it made him look bad. And now they call him a liar. And it puts a damper on his movies moving forward. But let's hope he can put together a product like he did with Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And some of his other movies that are fantastic and fun to watch. And they expand the acting, the fun, and the lore. And I think that's what he's going to do with Superman Legacy. So that being said, I enjoyed the Flash movie. I really, really did. I grade it. If you have to go to a 10 rating, I give it like a right under a 9. Like an 8.8. I Dude, I dug it. I dug it. I dug it. All right, video game, Polak. I'll catch you later, guys. Sorry, I needed to do the Flash review for a little bit. I wanted to talk about it. Let me get to some more of you guys' comments. Um, still have your suit from Dude, Where's My Car? No, we never owned that suit, uh, Brent. We never owned it. Uh, each suit at the time, whatever the wardrobe people that made it or created it, they said each suit was around two to three thousand dollars to make. Um, again, they overcharge. Plus, they do their time frame. They got to cut up. They got to figure out how to make a helmet. You know, the materials probably didn't cost that much, but it was the good bubble suits. It wasn't like the cheap small bubbles. It was like some decent big retrograde plastic bubbles, like a really good one. Then it also had a plastic sheet that didn't have bubbles on it that would hold the bubbles that were glued somehow on the plastic sheet. So we're not putting on bubbles. We're putting on basically a plastic sheet with the bubbles on the outside. And then they had all these little plastic sheets with little buttons to connect the hoodie and all that other stuff. And you could see where it cost a little bit of money to create it. Um, but no, I, I don't own it. Never got it. We, on the first couple of days working on Dude, Where's My Car, we had to wear those suits 
and it was over a hundred and like one degrees. And we were like out in the open, like on a ranch or something like that on the hills, closer to the sun. And me and Bill shot the other actor. We had to shut down production. Uh, Cause we were dying. We were sweating. We were the first ones to literally put on those suits in that hot weather and where we were not in a studio environment like like we were most of the other times. And we were sweating and dying and we were starting to pass out. We felt like we were going to pass out and we were drinking water and everything. And they had electrolytes and everything, but they had to go out. We shut down the production for like an hour. They had to go get a Gatorade. And they had to buy electrolyte package or whatever. I guess the, the set medic, the on-set medic did not have them at the moment. So we shut down production for like an hour, man. And then they had to they had to go out and get us a bunch of stuff. Then, you know, they came back with it like 30, 40 minutes later. Then we had to sit there and drink it for like another 30 minutes. Then we were able to start filming again. So it, it, it was a tough day or two. Um, but hey, what a fantastic experience that I'll never forget. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm trying to get all these comments on screen. Philip, you're a good guy, Bauer. I wish you the best in life, man. Good night. Hey, good night, Philip, man. I love you, brother. Flash, ah, Masters of the Universe. That's one of my other favorite movies is, um, Flash, ah, uh, He's the savior of the universe. I think that was the title you were doing. Flash. Uh uh. Go, Flash. Go. <laughs> that was a great movie, man. Did they flash you? <laughs> uh, do you do Twitch exclusively? No, but I Twitch exclusively. <laughs> What's up, Julian? No, nah, I, I, I don't. Do I have a Twitch account? I do. I think I have one for my Raider channel. I don't know, man. Too much technology, guys. Too much technology. All right, let's get into some some other news that's kind of exciting to me. And um, I just wanted to talk about it, share my life with you guys. Thank you guys for being online. So I got a little bit of acting and amazing news ahead. Even during the strike when nobody is working. I have just recently procured a well-established manager. And I am going to sign with a well-established agent um, to try to make a comeback. As soon as the strike ends, and I'm going to go full force. That was the problem. I was always able to get agents or this or that and pursue auditions, but I didn't give a hundred percent, right? I'm getting old in life. I'm close to 50 years of age and I know I still got it, but I, I got to do it again. But this time I know I've attempted comebacks before, but I never gave it a hundred percent. Meaning I didn't go to acting classes. I didn't wake up and breathe acting. I didn't, you know, do theater plays in the in the neighborhood. Um, I didn't take headshots religiously. I didn't study my craft as much. I didn't have meetings with agents or casting directors. I didn't go to lunch. I didn't go to events to meet people to progress my career. I didn't contact news people, you know, interviews, podcasts. I didn't do any of that while I was attempting a comeback, if you will. But this time, with the manager and the agent being so big in this industry, I have to give 100%. And they're going to hold me to it. This might be my last opportunity for stardom again. Or quality work. And they're going to hold me accountable. And I don't want to disappoint them. Because this is a blessing and a gift to get these people to even help my career without any money up front, without anything. Them just wanting to create 
a comeback story and get me into movies and TV again because they believe in me. So that's been set in motion the last month. And I started to reach out to acting classes and other people like that. And there's an opportunity for me to also be a part of my former acting class that we had a lot of celebrities in. A lot of celebrities. I mean, we're talking Leonardo, uh, Toby Maguire, Laura Prepron from the 70s show, uh, Lindsay Price, Kelly Martin, uh, so many amazing people, dude. Ryder Strong was a part of it. Danica was a part of it. Um, oh my goodness, Danica McKellar. Uh, dude, there's so many big ones. Molly Ringwald was a part of some. Um, check out youngactorspace.com. Let me see if I can get that on screen. Maybe I can get their website on screen with all the actors of where I went to acting class from. I know the studio doesn't exist now since COVID, but they're come. They're that's what we're going to talk about. They're making a comeback, and I'm going to hopefully be a part of a part of it. Saying my the website can't be reached. Young actors space. All right, let's click on the alumni. Excuse me. I, th I think I have some of the alumni in my video. Um, all right. How do I add this to the screen? I go to present, share screen, and then I think I click on there, and maybe it'll come up. All right. I think we got it. So this is the alumni page for the Young Actors Space, and there's a lot of the people that were in, like, you know, the classes that we were, that I was in, not all of them that I worked with, but a lot of them, you know, we got Chad, my boy, Chad Allen, Elizabeth Berkeley, Jessica. That's where I met Jessica, Jessica Beale, Thomas Wilson Brown. He's, he's in that honey. I shrunk the kids movie. Candish. That's right. Candish, Amanda, Brandon, Kirk. I, I, I keep calling them by first names, but Miranda Cosgrove, Zoe Deschanel was in there. Leo, Shannon Doherty, uh, Stephen Dorff, The Duff, Luke Edwards, I love Luke, Sean Patrick Flannery, Michael Fishman, Roseanne, Brian Green, still, we had the same agent, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Lucas Hosh, Lucy, Melora Harden, she's the daughter of Diane Harden, who created the school, Amy Jo Johnson, she's one of the Power Rangers, Christina Lakin, she's very popular, Aaron, Toby, Zolo, he's on the new Cobra Kai, he was in these classes, Kelly, Alana, oh my God, Alana. Alana Masterson, man. She was in everything. Chris Masterson. I guess Danny had some issues recently, right? Danny Masterson, but whatever. Uh, who else was in there? Tamara Mari, Tia and Tamara. River was in. Yes, River was in. Lindsay Price, Efren, my boy Efren. You know, what is that? Vote for Pedro, Molly Ringwald. Um, Emma Stone. I don't remember meeting her, but I know she was a part of it. There's Ryder, Shyla. Hillary Schwank, I met her, Christy Swanson, Allison Sweeney, Jody Sweeten, uh, that's Tiffany. We had classes with Tiffany, hence why I always would be on the set of Kids Incorporated. That's how we met as well early on. David Tom, my boy David, Nicole Tom, his sister, Shailene Woodley. Long story short, man, they got an amazing, an amazing history of helping actors at the Young Actor Space. So the opportunity has come up where we're going to do a reunion um, with a lot of these actors that I just mentioned. I don't know if they're all going to go, but we're having a reunion. And I know a lot of, I know some of the people that are going and I'm going to be very proud to see them, but we're having a reunion picnic and um, we're all going to get together and there's some major people going. And I was invited. They literally found me online and invited me. That meant they were thinking about me. And one of the major stars is putting the reunion together. And she's married to a chef, a very famous chef as well. And um, they're putting it all together. So 
I'm going to go to that. That's in a couple weeks. And then I'm going to see a bunch of people and friends of mine in the acting world. And we're just going to reunite. Then there's also the possibility of back in the days, um, well, since the studio is no longer open, there's the possibility that a lot of us are going to get together, get funding, or do whatever we can to resurrect the school because it closed during the pandemic um, when all that other stuff happened. It's still going on with online clashes right now, but we're, we're going to try to get the school together to, um, you know, bring it back to the fame and the stardom that it had like in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. Um, and we're going to do our best to bring it back. And that's exciting to me because it'll give me something to do. And just to just to know that I was welcome into these famous people's circles again many years later in life just made me feel good. Made me feel good. So that's the stuff that's going on for my amazing acting news and events that are coming up. And again, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what the future holds. I can't guarantee I'll be on any more TV or movies or anything. But I'm going to see some people that I love, that I studied with, that I hung out with. And that'll just open up more opportunities and more doors to have a comeback in life, to get out of the house, see some amazing people, share some good memories, share some good stories, maybe resurrect an acting class while I be a part of it. Maybe I could even teach acting if that's what might happen. I don't know. But I, I, I'm really excited, and this gives me a lot of good, good clarity and a lot of good feelings for the future. Plus, football's coming around, and I love football, and I can't not wait to do that. Um, I won't be able to film a vlog at this picnic or event with all the major celebrities. Maybe I'll be able to take some pictures or a little video or two, but let's be honest. For some of them, it's my first time seeing them in many, many years, and I don't want to bombard them with videos or vlogs or YouTubes or, or stuff like that. You don't want to do that. They just want to have a picnic, get together, and live life in the moment. But I'm sure I'll get a few pictures and I'll be able to share with you guys Maybe some of them will be real famous people. Maybe they won't. But either way, I'm excited. I cannot wait. And I'm going to get a five-star meal from a very, very popular chef that's on all the TV shows. His name is Curtis Stone. And he's the husband of a, a famous actress named Lindsay Price. And they're the ones throwing the picnic for all of these amazing people. And... I do see the confirmation list because I'm on that thread or that whatever post or that website where it shows the confirmation. Hey, it looks like some, some, some amazing, amazing popular people are going to show up for now. So I'm going to be one of them. Hopefully nothing happens to my health because every day I wake up, something's wrong with me, but we're just going to push through it. All right, guys, for, for me, I just want to say thank you. What a blessing. Rooting for you, Michael. Hey, Mike, hope you have a good night, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Glad things are looking up for you. Always nice to have things to look forward to. You're dang right. Slick, wicked films. We're excited for you. Thank you, Julian. Be nice to see you. What did you say? A Hollywood alternative to give credit to those actors who haven't seen or do anything in years, even if they would pro probably like work. Even though they would probably like work. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Can we go to this event? <laughs> We're not promoting any movie or TV shows. We're promoting our acting class. <laughs> pretty, pretty funny. All right. Let me just get on out of here, guys. Uh, I'm going to do another live stream for my Raider channel in about 30, 40 minutes. So if you want to feel free, go to my Raider channel. It's called Raider Central Live, but we're going to be talking football there. But for now, thanks for hanging out with me. Even though I didn't talk much, I didn't do much, 
All I gave was a flash movie review. Told you guys what was going on in my world. Took a couple of question and answers. Expect more of these in the future. And again, this is the start of a few more. And like I said, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Please hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. Consider becoming a member, supporting me even further through hopefully these better days ahead. All I can say is confidence breeds life. So find the confidence. And remember, hate can't hurt happy. I'm out of here. I love you guys. God bless you. And I'll talk to you next time.